아아 <웃음> Hello and welcome to our YouTube channel. <laughs> Today we're talking about subwoofers. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a question for Kent today. Kent, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Where should the subwoofer be uh -huh. placed? In the corner. Um, simple. <laughs> well, that's the simple answer. You know, it's it's not the best answer at all. I mean, so the wavelength, when in regards to how these sounds are being distributed in the room, is like really long. So I mean, when you're talking about subwoofer sounds, they're like. Um, the waves in the air is making is really long. It's like okay. some of them, the, the short ones are like eight or 10 feet long, okay. and, and some of the long ones are like 50 feet. So 50 the room feet. goes haywire with these uh, sound waves. So the placement is not so much about how weird it is, because also there's no gravity when it comes to sound progressing. Sound. Oh, sound yeah. waves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't know what's up and down. It's just like we're in a big, you can imagine if, if we're a fish in a big fish tank, it would be easy to see when you move the water because it's dense, then how the water is like making turbulences and waves and all that. But the air is doing the exact same thing. So, so the air is like, like a fish tank. Fully. Yeah, we're yeah, like fish air. in a fish tank. And, and so, um, so, so, so how that air is like when we get to where it's so long that it's extending a, the length of uh, of uh, the walls and, and 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 so it becomes less important uh, well you can't conclude exactly where in the room it should be you have to like figure out how do i pressurize this room with these sound waves to have the sound being in the place where i sit so because they they will like uh, also uh, level each other out. Uh, there's something called standing waves. You know, so between two walls, if you have a tone going and hitting the other wall, coming back, and it meets up with a new wave of its own uh, wavelength, and they hit each other, they come in right there where one is at the positive uh, crest and one is at the negative. You know, it's pressure and it's um, uh, what's. I keep forgetting. Vacuum. Vacuum, god damn it. Yeah. <laughs> so that will even each other out and disappear. So so bass can disappear from the room like Houdini. Uh, and <laughs> so, so, okay, so, so when yeah. does bass disappear? Well, that's when, um, you know, the same tone, like say if you, use, if you have something at 60 hertz, uh, that's 60, uh, you know, positive, negative movements, like the, the woofer cone here, it goes out and it goes back. It does that 60 times in a second. You have what's called a 60 hertz tone. If you imagine it has that tone and that tone goes between two walls and from hitting the other wall coming back, it, it will have some kind of timing and that can, it will, it will be out of the, the tact of the original one that came to the wall. It won't have like a perfect like go right perfectly back. Well, some of the tones will, but many of them will have some kind of interference with each other so that they disappear or gets less uh, somehow. Okay. So, so, you know, placing it in the corner will be better as, you know, than placing it randomly in the room, uh, throughout the room, generally, you know. But really, if you want to, like, target it optimally, you know, you have to uh, address that that it's more chaotic than that, you know, and, 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 and there's a way to do that. So there's chaos. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not there's chaos in the room. <laughs> it, well, it can be predicted, but I mean, it is, yeah, it is at, at the level as a consumer and, you know, it's chaos, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's chaos, okay. and so. You, but but there's a way to do it that it just looks a little weird, you know. Uh, yeah, to to, to, to find that what? placement. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so, so you're saying that the corn putting it in the corner works some of the time, but not all the time. Right. Like, how can I 
yeah. be precise with yes. where I put my subwoofer. Yes, yes, yes. So there's something called a base crawl. And why it has that name is that you will be crawling around the <laughs> baseboards. Which You're going to crawl. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what that is, is that you take your subwoofer, you place it where your head will be, preferably. Mm -hmm. At least you put the subwoofer in the seat that you'll be sitting. And then you take masking tape, and then you start crawling around the baseboards, and you listen for where it sounds good. And then that's where it should be. The subwoofer should be placed there. Yeah. And, and it doesn't matter. Or you can also be up, if it's more convenient that it's up high, it doesn't matter. Again, no gravity. So, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's up or down. So there's no advantage to have it on the floor besides that, you know, well, the placement gravity will help you, you know, so, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's really important where you're going to be sitting. So yes. that's why you put the subwoofer in your seat. So it's kind of like switching, you know, doing the old switcheroo. You put the subwoofer where you're going to sit, and then you go around the room yeah. and see where it sounds best. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. And But, I mean, you can cover the room extra if you if you place more than one subwoofer. Then you can accommodate, you know, more areas and make it more, more even. More you could, could you, you could, you okay. yeah, you could, and oh, then it really, be, I mean, it's important that you can control uh, what's called phase, which is timing in the subwoofer. That's important on one, but it's imperative if you get into having more than one. If you have two, okay. three, and four, you need that phase because if they're off on timing, they can start to cancel each other out just so you from need to that. do like a calculation when you say look at phase you can listen you you can oh, listen, listen. You, you can listen to it yeah yeah okay yeah and hear it so yeah. why but it would be good to measure it you, you you should measure it also I mean that's always a good one but it's pretty geeky I mean that's not like yeah. that's 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 another video yeah that's pretty geeky but yeah. why would you use two subwoofers instead of one why would you want that to to pressurize the room more evenly yeah. So with when you say pressurize, what are you saying? What are you talking yeah. about? How do you <laughs> Keep pressurize? Talking about the pressure. Um, no, but so well, that's because the the tones, the the waves of the deep uh, sounds is so um, wide and large that it's more about you know creating that base pressure in the room more than it is a direction because the wavelength is so long that you don't really have direction anymore so you need to, to pressurize the whole room where the higher tones they get more and more narrow so if you have like really really small tweeter sounds mm -hmm. you know then you're talking about the very directional so that's why that you know that will also be another uh, <laughs> you know, maybe probably in the future about you know tweeter mid range and all this kind of yeah. stuff. But but so the tweeter needs to be aimed at your ear precisely. But what about the bass? Does that have to be facing any which way? Mm -mm. No, because the wave, the wavelengths are so long. Like so, at the beginning of its task, which is like you know about around 100 hertz typically, is many times lower. But you it will at the most be like maybe six feet long. The, uh, sorry, it would be the shortest waves would be around six, seven, eight foot long waves, you know, at the shortest. And then they will get up to, a, you know, 50. So it's yeah, about 50. Six, six feet. These waves are about six feet to 50 feet. Yeah. So what if your room is less than 50 feet? Right. I mean, exactly. A lot of people have small living rooms. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So they will have a ton of what's called room modes. And room modes is when the waves are starting to bounce between walls and they're like progressing, you know, so widely and around the speaker also. See, that's the thing is that the speaker is, you know, it's only like maybe a couple of feet wide at the most. So that means that this wave is so um, large, it's quickly getting, you know, on a subwoofer, it'll always be so big that it will just go around it. So it's like progressing like, like, like a sonar you know, like in all directions in the room. That's why the placement is not about direction to you. It's about how can it be placed so that it, that it um, creates a, a even pressure in the room. Kind and of room. particularly, of course, the, the, that it has the right pressure in where you sit and want to listen to the music. Okay, so if you're, let's say you have um, a living room. Mm. You know, you have a living room and you have a sofa and you have your television. Yes. Should you put 
Um, the should you put your sub by your television, or should you put it behind the sofa, right? Or should you put it on a shelf? Uh huh. Or should you just um, do that the base crawl? You need to do the base crawl. Okay. For for all of it, yeah. It's 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 the same task if it's a home theater or it's a, it's a, what you call two channel stereo. You know that just to listen to music, it will all be the same. It's okay. physics of the room that determines that 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 task you know is the and so if you don't feel like doing the base crawl then just put it in the corner then right? put it in the corner yeah, yeah. yeah. that's going to be your best bet well, why is that your best bet oh right is because uh, there's come something called a boundary effect so it's like when you have uh, three uh, boundaries you know there's two walls and uh, the ceiling or but typically it'll be the floor floor two walls well then they will, um, the, the wave will hit them and then get projected into the room, you know, so okay. that you, you will channel everything in towards the room more than if it was on a wall, then, um, yeah, so, so you know, tip, tip, typically that, that will work out just fine, but it won't be the optimal position, I mean, okay. so, yeah. Okay, well, that about wraps it up. Hope you figured out or found out yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes yes i hope you found this information interesting on subwoofers and we'll see you in the next video bye bye bye